So in this beaker we have water and we have vitamin C solution and we have iodine. You saw us put the iodine in and the iodine color disappeared. In this beaker we have water and a little bit of starch solution and seven milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna pour each beaker in here and we're gonna stir them really quick. I'm gonna do that by just swirling. And then we're gonna wait and see one, two, we're going to wait and see if there's a reaction. It may take a second, but it should be fairly sudden if it does happen. Oh, there we go. So there's potassium permanganate solution in this beaker. And this beaker is a high concentration of sulfuric acid, and that acid can react with the potassium permanganate and make the color disappear. In this demo for the DIY lava lamps, we have two bottles with water at the bottom, and then Mr. Reddick and I are adding food coloring to our bottles. You're going to see that the food coloring in my bottle is going to get stuck in between that layer between the water and the oil. Um, and then we're going to just simply add Alka-Seltzer tablets to it. And you should see a reaction happen, and it's going to be your job to decide how and why the lava lamp is working. So we'll let you watch the rest of the video, and you can decide on what's going on. In this demo, Mr. Reddick and I are both cutting strips of newspaper. You notice that when Mr. Reddick cuts his, his newspaper falls apart. Uh, but mine uh, appears to not. It appears to continue to hold together, and so it'll be your job to decide why that happens. In this demo, you'll have to decide why Mr. Reddick and my demos both work, and then why they're a little bit different as well. Mr. Reddick's demonstrating a classic physics principle when he puts a card over a cup of water and the cup of water holds the card in place. I'm going to demonstrate that as well, but you'll notice my cup is going to do something different when I remove the card than Mr. Reddick's, and it'll be up to you to decide what's going on there. I will let you in on a secret here at the end when I drain the water from the cup. So just check this out here. I'm going to pull the cards. We'll see what happens. So notice Mr. Reddick's water fell out. My water's stuck. Not permanently though. You'll notice it's coming out here. And then what you'll notice is different from Mr. Reddick's glass and mine is Mr. Reddick's glass at the top is empty, but I, there's a little piece of like screening like you might find on your windows on that cup. Okay, in this demo, like the name of it suggests, we're dealing with instant snow. The bottom of this beaker before I poured water in was about 75 grams of instant snow polymer. As we added water to it, you'll notice that that volume expanded quite a lot. And so we're gonna mix around the snow for a second and then we're gonna dump it out and we'll pour some more water on it to see if we can get it to expand even more.
So you'll see all the snow here. You'll see there's a lot more of that snow than there was the powder and even than there was of the water. We're going to add more water to this. We'll see what happens. So as we add more water, sift it around, see that the amount of snow in this bin continues to increase. And our bin ends up almost a quarter full of this instant snow. And it is interesting to note that when you do touch this, it does feel cool to the touch, not necessarily cold, but definitely cool, which would indicate there's some sort of endothermic style reaction probably going on. In this demo, Mr. Reddick has a sodium polyacrylate polymer, and we've got a small layer in this beaker. He's going to add some water to it. And you'll notice as he adds the water to it and swirls it around that this is going to go from a liquid to a solid. He's going to flip this cup over, and it's not actually going to fall out. Interesting thing about this demo though is if you pour salt on this and then mix the salt in, we'll actually go back from that solid phase to a liquid phase. And indeed, you're going to see here as Mr. Reddick stirs that we get back to a liquid. Okay, so the wire's wrapped uh, several times around the nail, and we're gonna attach either side of the wire to the battery here, which will run a current through that wire, which will turn this into a little electromagnet. So the nails will actually stick to each other. In this oscillating reaction demo, the cup I just poured in had some starch and some other compounds in it, and we poured it into uh, a hydrogen peroxide solution that also had some sodium iodine in it as well. And you'll notice that the reaction of this, unlike our clock reaction in our first lab, or our first demo, oscillates back and forth from this kind of light orange, light yellow color to this deep, dark purple color. And it's going to keep doing that, and I'll just let you kind of view the different ways this does this. The top view is very interesting to see what kind of what's going on. So I'll let that reaction finish, and then you can see the next demo. In this demo, we're pouring a sodium thiosulfate solution into our oscillating reaction that ran out of energy and just was staying at purple. We're going to see what happens. It should be a reverse clock reaction, and we see that pouring that sodium thiosulfate in made the purple color disappear, and then it took a, it's going to take about four and a half minutes, and we should see a clock reaction happen here.
So in this demo, we've got water in this cup and then a little bit of luminol powder and a perborate mixture and then just a few flakes of copper sulfate, which is causing this glowing blue light. And we're going to add a little bit more copper sulfate here in a second and we will see how that affects this reaction. Okay, so there we've added more copper sulfate. We see that reaction become very, very bright, but also burn out very quick. And then when we turn the lights back on, we will see what this looks like normally. And that's it.